hello my dear students so today i am going to start with the new chapter called as polymers so we have finished with the one of the topic in inorganic chemistry called solutions and we have gone through the important concepts and important the type of questions asked in the examination now similarly we will go for the next important chapter called as polymers now this is an important chapter from computer exams also as well as theory also right so in computer examination some of the time for one marks the ec topics selected is under this also polymers is also one of the topic now this polymers usually in your examination has a one five marks question that is a question number 37 will be the concepts or questions regarding the polymers right so question number 37 for five marks will be related to chapter called as polymers right so we'll go with respect to the concept regarding this one by one right so let us begin with the concept called as polymers now is polymers the word was first is a, it is a greek origin or it is derived from a greek which means many units or many parts right so many parts or units are joined together to form what polymers so as in as the name indicates poly refers to many mers refer to units or parts so many units or many parts are joined together to form a polymers right so polymer how can you define so it is defined as a chemical substance of a high molecular mass which is formed by combination of large number of simple molecules called as monomers right so dear students it is very simple concept and simple definition here to form a polymer we require the small units or small parts which is referred to as what monomers these monomer units are joined together to form a polymer say for example i am a single monomer right i'll be holding the hand with one more monomer so it forms dimer so similarly that we dimer also hold one hand with one more so trimer so like this n number of monomers are joined together to form what a polymers so polymers are usually what it is a combination of small number of simple molecules called as monomers and the usually polymers have high molecular mass right this is also very important one because the monomers are joined together so molecular mass will be increasing right so one of the example you can see here ethylene right so what is the ethylene so it is an alkene the uh, alkene so the formula of ethylene is ch2 double bond ch2 now this is one monomer unit right so n number of monomer units are joined here to form what polyethylene right so you can see here ch2 ch2 so here the bond between these will be broken so that it forms a bond here and it forms a bond here so it forms a large number of polyethylene now remember children the name of the sum of the polymers can be easily remembered or the monomer you can easily remember is based upon the name so here you can see polyethylene that means this is a polymer which is formed by combination of what ethylene which is nothing but your monomer units here so polymer is nothing but it is formed by combination of a small simple molecules called as monomers the molecular mass of these polymers are usually right okay now the next terminology we are going to study here is the polymerization right so polymerization is nothing but a process by which monomers get combined and transformed into polymers and that process is called as what polymerization now we have studied here polymers means what the small molecules of monomers are joined together form polymer now this process we commonly call it as what polymerization the process of formation of polymers from monomers right so that process we call it as what polymerization so here n number of monomers are formed to form polymer and this process we call it as what polymerization right okay now we go for the classification of polymers now this is very important we find different types of classification right so we are going to study one by one right so polymers can be classified into different types so we are studying one by one so first classification we are studying is based upon the source of origin that means from where we are getting the polymer so that is called as what based on source of origin now under the source of origin the first type of polymers is called as natural polymers so as the name indicates here natural polymers that means polymers which are obtained naturally so these are the polymers which occur in the nature right or they are occurring naturally right for example in plants or animals you can see the polymers called uh, if you obtain the polymers from plants or animals 
that is called as what natural polymers so here you can see some of the example natural polymers includes the starch cellulose proteins natural rubber these are all examples for your natural polymers so where does starch occur it is the main reserve food for plants cellulose main structural material of plants proteins it acts as a breeding blocks in animals natural rubber occurs as latex right so you know you can see tree, some of the trees we get the rubber we are going to extract rubber right in the form of latex or milk right so these are the examples for natural polymers that means the polymers which occur in nature is referred to as what natural polymer so natural polymer is a type of polymers which is on based upon the source of origin then the second type of polymer we are going to call it as synthetic polymer so here the name indicates synthetic that means we are going to prepare right so the these are the polymers which are prepared in the laboratory are referred to as what synthetic polymers or it is also called as man made polymers right synthetic polymers are nothing but the man made polymers or prepared in the laboratory so those polymers are referred to as what synthetic polymers so example includes your polythene the plastic bags or synthetic rubber pvc polyvinyl chloride pipes you know that pvc pipes we get nylon 66 teflon or orlon these are nothing but all the examples for synthetic polymers that means which are synthesized in the laboratory or man made type of polymers then third type of polymers we are going to see here is a semi synthetic polymers so here as the name indicates semi synthetic that means partially so polymers which are obtained by making some modification in natural polymers now we have seen natural polymers here if there is some modification in the natural polymers then that is said to be as what semi synthetic polymers so these are the polymers which are obtained by making small changes or small modification in natural polymers by artificial means that is referred to as what semi synthetic polymers example includes cellulose acetate which is commonly called as a rayon then vulcanized rubber we are going to study what is meant by vulcanized rubber later on right so these are the examples for your semi synthetic so natural polymers means which occur in the nature then synthetic polymers means it is a man made polymer semi synthetic means a slight modification in the preparation of a natural rubber that is said to be as what semi synthetic polymers so these are the three examples for the uh, polymers which are based upon the source of origin now the second type of classification we are going to study here is uh, based upon the structure. Now, first one you have studied based upon the occurrence or origin. Second one you are going to study here is based upon the structure. Polymers are classified into first type called as a linear polymer. Now, you know what is meant by linear or straight, right? So, here the polymers are formed where monomers are joined together to form a straight type of polymer. So, these are the polymers in which monomer units are linked to one another to form a long linear chain so here you can see students here the monomer units are joined together to form what a long linear chain so that type of polymers we say it as what the linear polymer so this is an example for what type of polymer the polymer based upon the structure and these linear chains are closely packed in the space the close packing results in high density so these polymers are very close to each other so if they are close to each other the density of this polymer is higher and the tensile strength this is one of the properties we are going to study here with respect to linear polymers so in case of linear polymers we have high density high tensile strength high melting and boiling point so example includes high density polyethylene nylon and polyesters so and our examples for your linear polymer so in some of the competitive exam what they have asked they have given some of the properties right and you have to guess what is the type of polymer so hence you should remember the properties so linear polymers are usually having high molecular mass and high densities and then uh, tensile strength high melting and boiling point so example for this includes polyethylene polyethene so here remember polyethene so monomer here is ethene nylon polyester ester here is the monomer are the examples for your linear polymer so you can see here the diagrammatic representation for linear polymers then we go for the second type called as branched chain polymers so in this case you can see here the polymers are joined together to form a branches right so in such polymers the monomer units are linked to form long chains with some branched chains of different lengths with sources see here students in linear polymers it is a linear chain right but in branch what will happen it is also linear 
but along with that it is there is some branching occurring occurs branching occurs right so as a result of branching these polymers are not closely packed right so hence they have low density low tensile strength and low melting and boiling point right so here you can see the examples for your branch it is a linear arrangement right you can see here but along with linear they are also branched so hence example for branch chain polymers so since they are not closely packed so hence we can see it is opposite properties of that of linear they are low density but in case of linear it is having high density here low tensile strength but they are having high tensile strength they are having low melting point boiling point but linear has high melting and boiling point so examples for your uh, branched polymers is a uh, uh, low density polyethylene starch glycosan etc right so the first type of uh, polymers based upon the structure is a linear polymer second one is based uh, is nothing but branched polymers then third one it is called as a cross linked polymers or it is also commonly known as a network polymers right so cross linked polymers or network polymers so here as the name indicates the linkage is cross so they are linked with each other in the cross way right so in such polymers the monomer units are linked together to form three dimensional network right so here you can see the diagrammatic part for cross linked polymers so they are having a cross linkage with each of the type of monomer linear chains right and the properties of this cross linked polymers is they are quite hard they are rigid and brittle brittle means shining property right so examples for cross linked polymers are bakelite it is one of the polymer glyptol melamine formaldehyde polymer these we are going to study examples right later on but for time being remember so the properties of cross linked polymers are they are quite hard rigid and brittle right so i repeat once again based upon the structure the polymers can be classified into linear then uh, the second one is with respect to branched and third one is with respect to cross linked polymers or network polymers uh, the second mode of classification of polymerization right so first mode we have studied with respect to uh, based upon the origin second mode of for classification of polymers is based upon mode of polymerization that means how they are joined together right so that we are going to study here the second type of classification of polymers based on mode of polymerization so and based upon the mode of polymerization the polymers can be classified into first one called as a addition polymers so addition polymers what do you mean by that one we will see here so addition polymers are nothing but the polymers which are formed by polymerization of monomers containing double or triple bond right so usually double or triple bond is said as what unsaturated compounds these are referred to as what addition polymers so I repeat once again the polymers which are formed by polymerization of monomers containing double or triple bonds so those are called as what addition polymerization right so addition polymerization can be further classified in based on types uh, based on the basis of types of monomers right so under addition polymerization we are going to study different types so that is first one is called as homo polymers so homo refers to similar right so in this case the polymers which are obtained by polymerization of single type of monomer model now this is very important single type of monomer what do you mean by single type that means the monomer units are all of same type here the monomer is what ethene so there is no other unit which are joining with ethene so hence if there is presence of same type of monomer units then we call it as what homo polymer now you can see here we are studied with the, why this is an example for addition polymerization because it is a polymers which are formed by polymerization of monomers containing double or triple bond so here you can see it is having a double bond so if the polymerization is occurring with a double or triple bond then that type of polymerization is called as what addition polymerization now i think you are clear with the homo polymers in case of homo polymers the polymers are formed by same type of monomer unit so here you can see ethene units are joined together to form polyethene now if they are formed by different units so you can see it is called as what hetero polymers so in the as the name indicates here hetero refers to what different so here in this hetero polymers the polymers which are obtained by polymerization of two or more different monomers now this is very important students you know about me really illa adre homo polymers vala nimage one type of monomer unit ada but hetero polymers vala nimage two or more different types of monomer so that is called as what hetero polymer 
So one of the best example for heteropolymer is you can see here buta diene. Buta refers to four carbonates. Diene that means there is presence of two double bond. So either one the monomer you need to. And similarly N C R here you can see this is the structure of styrene. Right. So this is one monomer unit and this is one monomer unit. So here there are two different monomer units. So these two monomer units are joined together to form what? A polymer. So this results into formation of a polymer called as what? Buna. Yes. So it is called as buta diene styrene. It is other one other type of rubber. Right. So this is an example for heteropolymer. In case of heteropolymer, two different monomer units. In case of monomer unit, it is having a single monomer unit. So with this. We start we stop with respect to the today's class, right? So we have studied, we studied with respect to the polymers definition, polymerization process, classification of uh, the polymers based upon the origin into natural, synthetic, semi-synthetic, then based upon the structure into linear, cross-linked, and branched, and based upon the mode of polymerization. Addition polymerization, we have seen what is meant by addition polymerization. If there is a formation of a polymer which is formed due to presence of two or more uh, double bond or triple bond that is called as unsaturated compounds, then we call it as what? Addition polymerization. And the addition polymerization, we have two types. One is called as homopolymer, second one is called as heteropolymer. In case of homopolymer, there is presence of a single type of monomer units which are joined together to form a polymer. In case of heteropolymer, it is formed by the linkage of two or more different monomer units, right? So that results into formation of what a heteropolymer. So we will continue with the classification part in the next class. So if you have any doubts with respect to the whatever the concept is being told, please uh, reply to me so that I'll uh, clear your doubts, right? So with this, I stop the today's class. So you will see the continued part in the next class. Okay, thank you.